All right, YouTube. So this video actually is going to be uh, slightly different, but it needs to be one that has to be said. A lot of people, many of you commented uh, once I actually made my last video about the R1 and the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, uh, that I picked the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and ordered that, and why not the R1? Um, after owning so many 1D bodies, um, that would have been the logical choice, right? Right. Um, anyway, I actually held off quite a bit uh, into buying the R3. You guys know I got the R3 in here. Um, I shot some main events with the thing. Um, the videos are out there on my channel. Go check them out. Um, having said that, the R3 was their flagship up, up until yesterday when they announced the R1. Um, <clears throat> so if you have an R3, please don't feel one way or another. Some of the things I'm going to say here are probably going to excite some. Some of the things I'm going to say here are probably going to disappoint some. And some will probably walk away confused, like me. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of things that Canon did here following their traditional model. So their traditional model is the flagship is always lower megapixel, this, that, and the other. It's a speed demon. Well, they've had enough time, right, at this point. And I'm not being critical of Canon, but I think it needs to be said, right? So, you know, a lot of people just think, oh, well, you're just a fanboy. Really? After this video, I think you're going to have a different view. Um, the R1 is going to be a great camera for the right person or persons. It's made for the Olympics. It is not made for the masses. So if you think you're gonna be a YouTuber walking around like a dork with a little stick trying to use an R1, then the problem is with you. So what is this camera? Is it the most compelling offering right now for $6,299? Let's talk about it. I don't think so. That's why I didn't buy it. And let me tell you why. Okay, let's just get real and say it. Yes, it's got a full uni body. It's, it's gonna be incredible, no doubt. It's got some really awesome features. The, the um, um, being able to uh, uh, upscale the images, this, that, that's all awesome. That's great. It does shoot 14, 14, 40 frames per second, 14 bit raw. That's great. But you know what, Canon? I'm gonna be blunt here. You're three years too damn late to the party there. And why I say that is because the R3 originally was supposed to be that R1 and you damn well know it. You should have just put that in there and left it at the 24 megapixel and be done with it. And if, they, if you really wanted to come out with an R1, you could have come out with a 50 megapixel stacked type of thing. You could have, which did 60 or 100 frames per second, similar to like the Sony A9 III. And why am I bringing this camera up? The Z9, in my opinion, it's a great camera. It's really awesome, right, for the Nikon camp. You guys already know my, my thing about a flagship not being able to shoot at its highest speed in RAW shouldn't be called really a flagship, but it is what it is. That's what Nikon, Nikon made that choice. So if you're getting butt hurt, go talk to Nikon. Please don't leave a comment here. I am not gonna entertain it. Same thing here with Canon. Yes, you got 40, 40 frames per second, 14 bit RAW, great. That's nice. But Sony already released a fr freaking global shutter in there. Yes, it's gonna have possibly a little bit lower dynamic range, I get that. But that's 120 frames per second, full raw at 14 bit. That's insane. They kind of screwed themselves by putting a CF Express Type A card. If they would have put a Type B card in a Sony A9 III, that machine would be unstoppable. Right, so it won't be like choking. Um, that's one thing you did good here because you put two CF Express Type B cards in this R1. That's awesome. However, 
anyone that has an R3 right now, you have an incredible machine. Please don't feel that you have to go out there and spend extra money and buy this thing again. You don't. Are you going to see a world of difference? No. Are you going to be able to utilize some of the new action priority stuff? Probably not. But I've shot that R3 in many situations. You guys have seen it. And it's pretty damn compelling as, as a camera. So Canon, honestly, you could have come up with something different there. And really just called the R3 the R1. And maybe had an R1 R type of version for the higher resolution like you did the 5 DSR and Sony does, you know, their, their R lineup. I, I am actually almost dumbfounded on some of these things here, on what they've done here, and I was confused myself. But when I looked at the product set of the R5 Mark II, by the way, on the R5 Mark II, on the Canon site, as well as B&H site, at 6.30 in the morning, when I actually placed that order, it actually said it was cross-typing both cameras. Apparently, they changed that because that was a screw-up. So if I said that in my last video, that's my apologies to you. That's still not gonna stop me from getting the R5 Mark II. Let me tell you why. This, the the C-Log 2 in that R5 Mark II, 16 stops of dynamic range shooting video that can shoot raw, 8K. Man, if you're a filmmaker, that's a freaking dream for under $5,000. And if you haven't ordered one yet, you probably aren't going to see one for a long time to come. That is why the R5 Mark II caught fire when it came to the orders. The R1 would have caught fire if you didn't have an R3 already in place, which had almost 90% of sort of what the R1 is already. Yeah, you did some changes, some things better. Sure, that's great. But sorry, Canon, I think maybe I'll pick up an R1 eventually at some point, but it wasn't compelling enough to get my 1Ds out of my, my hand because <clears throat> though you have some, you know, breaking technology type of things in there, I don't know. I, I think that R5 Mark II is going to be the best bang for the buck and going to eat the lunch of many brands for, for for years to come. I don't know what you guys think. You, leave your comments below if you agree. I'm being very critical of Canon because a lot of people just think he's just a fanboy. I'm not. I'm actually not super excited about the R1. Now, again, in the Olympics, it's going to rule the Olympics. No doubt. Guaranteed. They, the R1 is going to be the most sold camera or most used camera on every sideline, every arena in the world, period. Whether we like to believe it or not, they will. You can't stop it. That's, that's bound to be Getty Images, you know, iStock Images, you know, uh, all these people are going to order thousands of these things and have them. It just wasn't for me. I would have bought it. But this R5 Mark II, I am super excited. I'm actually stoked. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Jared Poland just did a video on the autofocus on that. And I have a friend in, have funny, Australia that actually confirmed what he showed on the screen uh, right after the launch there. And uh, that autofocus is, uh, I, I can't wait to try it. You know, I'm not going to say a thing till I have the camera in my hand. Because honestly, I think Tony Northrup's made, you know, certain claims about certain things without ever even holding the camera in his hand. Um, <clears throat> which I think leads to, you know, either speculation or leads to disappointment down the line. Because it might actually end up doing something better than you thought. Then you make another video saying, oh, I was all wrong about it. Oh, this, that, and the other. So I think, you know, we need to we need to be cognizant of what we're saying and, and are we being responsible, right, when we actually put these messages out there. 
So really the title of this video, you know, the Canon R1, the real truth on why I did not order one. Um, that's, that's the reason why. Because I, I truly think for a few hundred dollars less, if you're going into a brand new system and you want the ultimate freaking blazing machine, I, I think that Sony A93 is the way to go. Um, there is nothing faster. There's nothing more technologically advanced. Um, yes, I wish you know you could do that data data rate transfer and it had CF Express Type B cards. If you can live with that, you'll be fine. Um, that's the only real thing, and, and obviously it's slightly little uh, lower di dynamic range. Um, you should be you should be fine. But having said that, I think. Canon, I know you had a hard time with this one because you already had released that R3 and didn't know which direction to go. Uh, and or you did, and you still followed the old playbook of, you know, lower megapixel for the flagship. I don't know how that's going to work out in the long run. We'll see. I mean, the professionals will definitely buy it, no doubt. They will buy it. But trying to get it into the hands of a prosumer or an enthusiast is going to be a, a little bit of a challenge, I think. Um, I think the R5 Mark II is going to, you know, suit most people's needs. It's got a fast sensor, fast readout. It's got 90% of all of the features that the R1 has in that R5 II, which you can't be for 4,200 bucks. No one's got anything like it. No one, no brand, not even Sony. So you did a hell of a job there, but I think on the R1, we need to sort of either rethink it or unless you have things up your sleeve that we are not aware of that you plan to actually release into the R1 um, through firmware updates, uh, with this new architecture of uh, software that that uh, this these two new cameras have been written with, um, so it's going to be very exciting to see what you guys actually do with this. Uh, but I'm in. I I did order the R5 Mark II, and I can't wait to get my hands on one. By the way, if you did order an R1, um, you probably aren't going to see one till November. Uh, a lot of people think that no one actually ordered it. You're wrong. A lot of people actually ordered it. A lot of people that were that just wanted to try it type of thing didn't order it. Um, but the people that really need it from a professional perspective, they placed their order for that for that camera. So right now you're looking at November before you even get one. Um, so if you order the R5 Mark II, use the links below. Uh, it does help the channel. Yes, I know. Yeah, it does. So rather than buying it from other channels, might as well buy it from here, from B&H, order it. Um, if you use that Adorama, just send me an email. I'll send you an Adorama link as well. Um, but B&H has been very good about getting those cameras out. That's That was my experience with uh, the uh, uh, Fuji, um, Fuji film camera because they got it to me way before Adorama did. Anyway, um, I'm digressing back to the r1 if it's the cam if it's a if it's what you want and if it you're good with it and you don't have an r3 go for it uh, you're not going to be disappointed it's a good camera but i would strongly urge you to look at the sony a93 uh at the same time um and a lot of people are going to sit there and say oh look at the you know nikon z8 no it's not the same same game i mean for that we have the R5 Mark II. The A93 and the R1, they sit in a different league uh, of professionalism, the speed by which we need. We need RAWs, not JPEGs uh, at their highest speeds. And uh, a lot of people believe that, oh, everyone on the sideline only shoots JPEGs. That's not all true. Not all true. I know people that shoot Formula One shoot a RAW and they goes up to the desk with like Wi-Fi 6 in these two cameras now um, and high-speed tethering. Um, people have done that even with the Sony A1. Um, so, you know, things are changing, times are changing. Um, and uh, if I can actually capture a 
14-bit file versus an 8-bit file? Absolutely, I'm going to give it a shot any day. I'm gonna take that advantage. Why would you not? Anyway, so leave your comments below before this video gets too long, but those are my thoughts on why no R1 for me, uh, for now, and uh, why the R5 Mark II uh, is, is uh, what I actually ended up going with. So with that, like, subscribe, be nice to each other, go out there, create your magic, and above all, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Again, I, I'm saying this 100 times to you guys because it's very important that YouTube sees this. We are gonna grow this channel. There's a lot of stuff I'm working on. I can't share yet. Yes, we're talking about the gear, but we're gonna start talking about the art of photography on how to get the most out of this gear, not just talk this gear mumbo jumbo tech nonsense all the time. Not saying it's nonsense all the time, but it's just, it gets too much. We'll make it fun and we'll actually do some really cool things coming ahead. So um, with that, I will talk to you in the next one. Thanks.